welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's only daily television platform for small businesses. We bring you the right information to empower you, the SME entrepreneur, tonight on a special show. Broadcast One presents Disruptors. We're bringing you a special conversation with Henkel, a global chemical and consumer goods company. They have 188 manufacturing plants across the world. They also place great emphasis on innovation and research and have 22 R&D centers across the globe. Tonight, I caught up with Shilip Kumar. He's the country president for Henkel in India to understand their focus on the domestic market. Take a listen. speaking with us here on ET now and talking about the innovation and talking about really what the plan and the footprint is for Henkel here in India. I want to start by talking about some of the segments and industries and verticals really that you're present in as far as uh, your global business is concerned. Uh, you look at home care, you look at beauty care, you look at adhesives, a whole range of verticals. Uh, let's start this interview by talking about some of those verticals that you look at in India. Okay, so in India, we are primarily focused on adhesive technologies, which is the B2B part of our business. Uh, we also do a little bit of um, professional uh, beauty care business. So these are the two that we really do in India sure. out of the overall portfolio. Would you look at perhaps uh, some of the other industries or some of the other segments that you uh, have globally for the Indian market? Do you think the Indian market perhaps would lend itself to some of these other industries? I think that's, that's a continuous process. We are always exploring what more we can do in India. Uh, clearly, we have a big setup and we would like to grow it uh, to the extent possible. So that's, that's an ongoing exercise, uh, both within adhesive technologies as well as in our uh, uh, consumer businesses. So what I'm really trying to understand, Shilip, is uh, what the big picture is when it comes to the domestic market here in India. Uh, if you could you know, do some crystal ball gazing and say 2030, 2050, this is where we want to be in India. What is that? Could you share that with our viewers? Yeah, so clearly India is a country with immense potential. You know, the penetration levels of uh, the stuff that we do are really, really low. So there's, there's great, great opportunity to grow. Uh, we haven't looked that far, 2030, 2050, but uh, clearly we do have uh, a five-year and a 10-year plan. And just to share with you, you know, we would like to double our revenues over the next five years and pretty much in areas that we already exist in. So we see so much of opportunity in our existing business that uh, really we don't need to do much apart from sort of ride the growth within the country. Okay, so what are you doing to ride the growth in the country then? Are you investing more here in the country when it comes to uh, the manufacturing space? Are you increasing the number of people perhaps that you have here? What are you doing? So, great question and uh, yes, we are investing. Uh, we have a big project coming up uh, at Kurkum, which is uh, towards Sholapur, maybe two hours drive from here. Uh, this is a multi-technology site. We've already invested uh, more than 200 crores in this site, and uh, it's only probably 30% done. So we have great plans to build on this investment. Probably over the next five years, uh, there will continue to be new plants coming up on the same site. So uh, clearly, we have to manufacture locally. Uh, we have to be close to our customers. And of course, as the business grows, uh, the other element, which is the people, you know, clearly uh, the Indian business is run by Indians. We have uh, close to a thousand people already and uh, this continues to grow. Okay, uh, I want to break each of, uh, you know, those two parts, the manufacturing as well as the people aspect and talk more in depth as far as the manufacturing here in India is concerned. Mm -hmm. What is the plan when it comes to uh, the manufacturing space. How many more plants would you perhaps look at? What kind of investments are you looking at for the domestic market? You very briefly did talk about, you know, how much you would look at when it comes to doubling the kind of revenues that you get from India, mm -hmm. uh, but a little more in depth in terms of maybe what pockets of India are looking good when it comes to manufacturing the kind of products that you do. Yeah, so we have a, we have a legacy in the country of, uh, you know, acquisitions, joint ventures. So we have a pretty, uh, spread out manufacturing footprint as we speak. 
So we have several small plants in uh, different parts of the country. Uh, clearly we see uh, the potential to put up uh, one large multi-technology site. Uh, of course, we will continue to have our smaller plants in different parts of the country. However, this would be uh, sort of, you could call it the mothership. Okay. And this is what we're doing at Kurkum. And clearly this is done with a time horizon of 10 years. So um, this will meet the demands of the country over the next 10 years. In fact, for the next five years, it will be in construction mode. So as we speak today, there's one part which is ready. We are selling product out of it. And just side, besides that, uh, we have another plant coming up. And as that is ready and that starts selling, the third one will start coming up. So we already have three phases. And this will take us at least till 2021. So we have a, a clear cut uh, plan till 2021 on manufacturing. And this meets our demands certainly till 2025. However, if India does even better than we expect, uh, maybe we may, we may need to do something a bit faster. Okay, fair enough. The government on its part has been very aggressively and very actively pushing the Make in India plan, encouraging more businesses like you to manufacture here in India. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any specific benefits coming out of that program? Just walk us through what the regulatory environment is when it comes to manufacturing companies like yourself. Yeah, so it's, um, it's getting better, let me put it this way. It's still not uh, the easiest place in the world to do business. Uh, especially when it comes to putting up uh, greenfield manufacturing sites. However, if I compare it to the time we started, uh, we started, uh, this project was conceptualized in 2013. And we bought the land uh, probably end of 14, early 15 to now. Uh, it's gotten progressively better. Sure. Uh, we've seen uh, uh, very proactive uh, actions taken by the government in supporting us. You know, just to mention one, the, uh, the Maitri system that the government of Maharashtra has put in place, where, you know, they give you a forum to really come out and talk about the issues that you are facing while you are putting up the plant. Uh, that's a great forum. And in fact, the doors have always been open uh, uh, with both uh, the bureaucracy as well as uh, the Industrial Development Corporation, as well as the Pollution Control Boards. I mean, clearly people are... Uh, uh, are keen to, to help you and to make things easier for you. Uh, having said that, uh, you know, some of our rules continue to be pretty archaic. Let me pick up on that. Um, as someone who works and has manufacturing plants in so many different countries across the world, if you're saying some rules are archaic, my question to you is, even as we're counting down to next year's budget, perhaps one or two things that you'd like to see changing specifically for the manufacturing uh, industry, not maybe for yourself, uh, mm -hmm. but for the manufacturing ecosystem. Uh, if you want to see a few things changing, what would that be? Yeah, so I would um, I would talk about regulatory approvals. Uh, clearly, uh, there needs to be a timeline. You know, sufficient resource needs to be present uh, to ensure that those timelines are met. Uh, because at the end of the day, time is money. You know, when you when you're putting up projects. Uh, you have your own timelines, and uh, very often these timelines get disturbed uh, because regulatory approvals do not come in time. Sure. And uh, you know, if you just extend that, you're not very sure what the correct timeline is. So I would say the first step that I would like uh, the government to look at is to to put uh, timelines and you know make them formal that this is the time within which you can expect a reply or an approval or something of that nature. And of course, once they make that commitment, they have to follow it up with resources as well. So, you know, for example, if uh, there is a discussion around an environmental clearance, you know, the committee that is giving this clearance needs to meet, right? So, you know, simple things like that, uh, I think they will go a long way in uh, encouraging further investment in India. You know, clearly from the demand side, uh, we don't really need to sell India to the world. I mean, everybody is aware of uh, the population, the way the economy is growing. But this ease of doing business side, uh, you know, coming to number 100 is okay. But, uh, you know, being hun number 100 is not that great, right? 
Sure, fair enough. Uh, let's talk at this point uh, mm -hmm. as far as innovation is concerned. Mm -hmm. How crucial is innovation for a business like yours? How are you innovating? And I want to get a sense of whether you're innovating for each market that you're in. And if you are, some tips that you can give our viewers about how you're perhaps localizing you know, your products, you're mm -hmm. localizing your processes, etc., mm -hmm. to the local markets you're present in. Yeah, so for us, um, you know, it's innovate or perish. So it's, there's no option. You, we are in the specialty materials business. You know, what separates specialty from commodity is really value addition. You know, you are, you're actually going there to a customer and saying, I can get this done better for you, or I can solve your problem. And if you have to do that, you have to innovate. And you know, we are sitting here in an innovation center. This is our Hinjewadi Innovation Center that uh, really supports um, transport, metal, and general industry. So we have uh, you know, our chemists in the wet laboratories who are formulating different types of materials. And then uh, in this center itself, we have the application development people who would then test this chemistry to see whether it uh, gives the properties that are required of the materials. So let me, let me make it a bit more granular to sort of bring it, bring it to life. So if we look at, uh, say, the automotive industry, so the mega trends there are known to everyone, right? It's light weighting. So you need to make your car lighter and that also ties into sustainability. So your carbon footprint gets reduced, right? You have um, safety. You know, clearly you know the number of accidents that take place on Indian roads and uh, that being the case, you want your car to be as safe as possible. And then you have the electrification, you know, the electric cars, uh, uh, so to speak. So, so now, how do we go about innovating? I think the first step in any innovation is the voice of the customer. So what's your challenge? What's your problem? You know, can we be involved in the designing? So if, if you can have that level of intimacy with your customer, that you hear of the problem uh, at the design stage, companies like ours can then do far better in terms of developing products that would then sort of, you know, dovetail into the design of the car rather than coming in at a later stage when there is a problem and uh, we have to sort of solve the problem in an already completed design. Sure. So what we try to do, for us it's critical that we are listening to the voice of the customer every day. And we have 250 plus people who talk to customers every day. Over and above that, we have probably another 250 who talk to another set of customers via our distributors. So now you can imagine the, the, the Henkel juggernaut where you have 500 people in India talking to customers every day. And we like our discussions to be built around value propositions, what we can add in terms of value, rather than you know, the classical negotiation and sure. pricing and that kind of stuff. Sure, sure, sure. So you know, we've been very successful in the automotive space, in the flexible packaging space, in the general industry space. Um, and you know, I can give you a hundred examples around uh, how we've sort of made a difference. We are a bit uh, you know, behind the scenes, so when you look at the car, you would wonder, you know, where is Henkel in this car? I'm sure that question comes to your mind, but we are all over. You know, we, are, we are in many different parts of that car, making it lighter, making it safer, and also supporting a lot of the electronics now that is going into cars. We're going to slip into a very short break on that note, but we'll continue this conversation with Henkel on the other side, uh, understanding really what their footprint is when it comes to the Indian market. Just stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching this special show, Broadcast One Presents Disruptors, and tonight we're in conversation with Henkel. Speaking of innovation, I want to speak about also your investment into R&D, and particularly the 22 centers that you have here in India. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can give us a footprint and a timeline in terms of how you're looking at increasing those. What's the plan really as far as R&D in India is concerned? Okay, so yeah, the 22 centers are global. 
So in India, we have uh, two centers out of those 22. One is the center that we are currently at, and we have another one at uh, Thane Belapur. So these are the two centers, and they're sort of split uh, uh, you know, by sub-businesses. Sub so they have their areas of expertise. For example, uh, you know, the packaging side of thing is, is done at Thane Belapur. And uh, as I said, transport, metal, and general industry is all done here. You know, clearly, as we continue to grow in the country, uh, this will not be sufficient. Uh, you know, okay. this center, in fact, it's quite interesting. We started building it in uh, 2013. We put it up in about nine months. It's a built-to-suit center. So, and the day we started it, it was full. So, you know, normally you have a buffer and you, uh, you know, fill up your center over a three, five-year period. But I guess, like all things in India. You know, some of our infrastructure has uh, probably the same issues. You know, we, we are sort of a little bit behind time. And whenever I talk to our senior leadership, I always tell them that we need to do more in the area of innovation. You know, we have, uh, we have a proposal currently with our headquarters for doing something, you know, at the scale probably at least three to five X of what we have today. We clearly feel that India brings to the table tremendous advantages not only for this country, not only for our region, which is India, Middle East, Africa, but the whole world. You know, we have talent pool in this country. You know, chemistry uh, is a you know, widely studied field in this, uh, in this country. Specialty materials, again. Sure. So, I mean, there's tremendous potential. The people talent is tremendous in this country. And it comes at an extremely, extremely competitive uh, cost position. So it's not only India. We would like to innovate for the world from India. Uh, we've been uh, talking about manufacturing. And uh, I definitely want to talk about uh, sustainability. Sustainability uh, has become a buzzword, if I can call it that, globally. But I want to understand really whether industry here in India has also caught up with what is happening in global markets. Do you see enough understanding of why businesses should become sustainable? I think it's, it's evolving. It's not uh, at the same level as uh, when you say globally, I presume North America, Western Europe. However, uh, it is moving in the right direction. Uh, clearly, again, you need to sort of compare with the past. Today, uh, many, many more people talking about sustainability, even uh, certain actions being taken around sustainability. You know, this great uh, solar initiative uh, that our prime minister, in fact, is front-ending. Uh, and he's got a, an award for it. Um, you know, clearly um, we are moving in the right direction. We have to. I mean, given our, our precarious uh, oil position, we, we need alternates. And uh, more importantly, it's, it's good. It's a good legacy that we leave for the future. I want to talk specifically about what uh, Henkel is doing. Um, mm -hmm. Your stated mission is that you want to be 100% renewable energy uh, dependent uh, mm -hmm. by 2030. Mm -hmm. uh, you also, of course, have a stated mission of reducing your carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. Just run us through perhaps some of the measures you're putting in place at the company. Yeah, so this again is the global initiative. Um, uh, we, uh, we have a, a sub-initiative within India as well. And uh, as I said, we would actually like to do it a bit earlier than that. Okay. Uh, so, you know, some of the measures, uh, clearly Kurkum uh, will start from the day it started. Uh, we already have about close to 20% through uh, solar energy. So all our roofs have uh, solar panels and they are uh, you know, going to be operational very soon. Uh, we are also looking at uh, how we can sort of procure renewable uh, energy through the grid because you know, it's limited how much we can do uh, within our site, uh, but clearly you know, our internal goal would be maybe five years before that, we should be in India 100% renewable energy. Over and above that, we also have this uh, mission that, uh, you know, in terms of specific consumption uh, of three, three different things. So two is consumption and one is probably relating to waste. So we have, we have power, we have water, and we have waste. Sure. So what we say is that as a company, if we are really doing things well, we're getting more and more efficient, and we are contributing to sustainability, uh, we would then reduce specific consumption. By specific consumption, I mean consumption per, say, kilogram or ton of product that we produce, right? That, that way you will get the right uh, comparisons. And uh, we have this mission to reduce electricity consumption, 
water consumption by a third, and also the waste generation by a third by 2030. And this mission we put in place in 2010, and I, I'm happy to report that we are, we are absolutely on course, and India is contributing uh, very, very actively to this. So it's not only what type of power you use, but just reducing the amount of power you use. Yeah, that, that also contributes to reducing your footprint. The last piece that I want to talk to you about mm -hmm. is the use of technology. Mm -hmm. And it's a big part of your story, it's a big part of what you do. Mm -hmm. So just talk to our viewers about what technology means to you and how you're using technology at Henkel. So, you know, when we look at technology, uh, there are two facets to it for us. So one is, of course, our manufacturing technology. And the other one is more related to our customers and, you know, how our products contribute to the movement of technology in those industries. Sure. You know, our technology of manufacturing also is continuously progressing. And that's why I, I talked about the specific targets earlier for, you know, uh, the power of three, as we call it. So, you know, that's where we have to bring in new manufacturing technology that makes our products faster, cheaper, mm -hmm. with less utilization of water and power. These are the main two, you know, utilities that we use when we are formulating our chemicals or we are, you know, doing the chemical reactions, etc. So we have to continuously innovate on that side as well. Another major area in, in, within the sphere of technology is the Industry 4.0, or the Smart Factory, as it is called, where we use sort of the power of the internet, we use the power of automation, and we actually make use of this to manufacture our products more cost-effectively, as well as, you know, as we call it, the first time right. So we make ourselves more efficient. Now, we are doing a lot of stuff in this area at our Kurkum facility, so it's almost completely wired. You know, of course, we have the normal uh, DCS controls, but we go one step beyond that, and now the automation is really being used uh, to support the enhancement of efficiency as well as to sort of improve the quality of the product. So this is another major, major initiative and this is uh, something that we, we're all very proud of. Sure. Thank you very much for speaking with us and all the very best. Thank you very much for coming across and giving us the opportunity to showcase Henkel. Thanks, sir. All right, completely out of time on this special conversation. If you have any feedback for us, here's how you get in touch. Leaders of Tomorrow Times Group.com is our email ID. You can also get in touch with us on social media. Sunanda underscore J is my personal Twitter handle. LOT underscore ET Now is our official Twitter handle. Our Facebook page, Leaders of Tomorrow on ET Now. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.